Good morning again. You're once more viewing me on your, uh, your screen with whatever device you have. The sermon that you are, are listening to now, I, um, I recorded almost three weeks ago. I am now speaking to you from the past. Ooh. Even though I don't know specifically what is happening in the world right now, that is three weeks into the future, as I now record, you, you know what I mean. Uh, I, I bet that uh, we are still suffering from the usual stuff, politicians, societal imperfections, and of course the ever-present COVID-19. The crud is still with us, I am sure. And a siren just went by the church. I'm sure you heard it. We pray for whatever is going on with that. Amen. Uh, not only do we continue our Good Words for Hard Times series, we actually conclude it uh, with this sermon. Two weeks ago, the word was listening. This week, it is abiding. As I mentioned two weeks ago, uh, these words point to ways to have a give-and-take dialogue with God and others and ourselves. It's not just a, a one-way street, a one-way uh, road to a, a lonely nowhere, but uh, something is happening with me, something is happening to the person who hears, and there's some give-and-take going on. Today, we have the word abide. The word abide in the Bible uh, is both acting and reacting. Just like so many other verbs and nouns in the Bible. Um, abide. Another way of saying it is to, uh, uh, I guess would be to say that uh, that means meaningful living with one another. Uh, I abide in my house with my wife. I don't just rent space there. I, just, I don't uh, just scurry down into the basement to be by myself, to do laundry. I, I'm, I'm actually inhabiting the same house with another person for whom I care and love. And so um, meaningful living, I guess, is a, a good way to say abide. So, in John's Gospel, uh, from chapter 15, and as you probably know, that's part of a multi-chapter uh, section in John, uh, where Jesus spends time with his disciples before Jesus faces his own death on the cross. But uh, in chapter 15 of John's Gospel, Jesus, Jesus encourages his disciples uh, with the words of verse 4 where he says abide in me as I abide in you just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me notice uh, three parts of abiding if you didn't notice it well I'm about to tell you three things here for abiding or living meaningfully with Jesus, with others that Jesus teaches. One, Jesus says, he abides with us. The second is, uh, point was, we abide with Jesus. And the third thing was, that mutual abiding comes with consequences, comes with results. Jesus calls it fruit. Something arises from that dialogue between God and Christ and us. Something always arises when we abide with one another. Our and God's mutual abiding is not a passive and empty ticking up space. Our abiding dialogue 
when we abide with God, must show something good coming from it. Fruit. Something good coming from it. Matter of fact, that's a sign to show us that we are abiding in God and God abiding with us or when we abide with one another. Something good comes from it and, and that something good is fruit. That fruit is described several times in different places in the Bible and the New Testament. One is, uh, comes from one of the uh, lectionary texts for today, Romans 12, from verse 9 to verse 21. Um, Paul is describing the fruit that comes when we and God abide together and when we abide with each other. Uh, I'm sure you've all flipped to your Bibles by now. Uh, I should assume that. If not, you can play catch up. Beginning with verse 9 of chapter 12 of Romans, Paul says, Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in, in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. That's a tough one. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are, especially preachers. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. Another siren just went by. Lord, we pray for that as well. Amen. Verse 17 again. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. How we treat others, how we treat ourselves, that is a sign, that is a result of abiding in God and God abiding in us to have a meaningful living relationship with God and with one another. To treat others with honor, say what we mean, mean what we say, rejoice and hope and glory in God, even in suffering, to pray, to share, show hospitality, to esteem others, do not think that we are better, to seek the good and the noble and others, to try to live in peace, not to desire revenge, not to not shame or defame anyone, to always allow for others to repent, to do good, even when faced with evil. We who do such things, or even uh, just try to do such things, shall, by definition, abide with God and find that God abides with us. If we want to know what abiding with God and abiding with one another means, we don't have to go, go heavy-handed theological. It's in how we treat one another. That is the sign for us abiding in God and God abiding with us. Abiding with God and God abiding with us 
meaningfully living with God and God with us is the beat and the rhythm and the tempo for our dance with God. Even as we must suffer through the COVID-19 crud or endure all of the pleasant programming which is about to hit us from all the presidential politics, especially being in Ohio, we always get it. Or as we fret about our church's future, or we try to live in the good trouble spirit of the late John Lewis, or simply to live with our neighbors and friends and families, and for us as our church family to live with one another as we should. To live and to forgive and to be loved and to be forgiven. These are the rules of the house. These are the rules of God's house. If we are to abide with God and God is to abide with us. To live meaningfully with one another. As we step past the welcome mat and set up house with God to abide, to abide, to live meaningfully with God and God with us. As the Spirit stirs and makes its home with us and in us and amongst us. Let us pray. Lord of all power, Lord of all might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works, which points to your having made a home with us and in us as we abide in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever, and as always, the people say, Amen.